It was another boring, average day in the town of Malden. Tom just got home from university after a long and stressful day. He knew he had a lot of homework to do, but he really didn't feel like doing it. He never really liked going to college anyway. He only enrolled in the courses because his mom pretty much forced him to. So to clear his head a bit, he decided to call his friend Kyle to see if he wanted to go hang out somewhere with each other. Once he answered, he agreed, and so Tom made his way over to Kyle's place. When he got there, Kyle seemed a lot more excited than usual. He was always a very cheerful person, but this time it seemed like he had won the lottery or something. Tom asked what was up, and Kyle told him to follow him, because he had something to show him. They go upstairs to Kyle's room, and that's when Tom sees it. The thing they've been searching for for what felt like ages. It was a copy of Knuckles' Chaotix. The game came out back in 1995, which was over 16 years ago, so finding one of these was not an easy task to do. They were both huge Sonic fans at the time, and this was the one game they hadn't played yet. So, Kyle put the cartridge into the 32X and started it up. Once the game booted up, they noticed that something was strange already. On the title screen, Sonic was there standing with the rest of the Chaotix. This shouldn't be possible since they knew Sonic only showed up at the end of the good ending during the credits. They shrugged it off as just an easter egg and decided to do a two-player game. Tom chose Knuckles and Kyle chose Mighty. When they got to the first level, they once again noticed something. Sonic was there just standing in front of them. They soon found out that they could actually interact with him when they walked up to him. A text box appeared over Sonic's head that simply said, You must collect the six Chaos Springs in order to stop Robotnik. They didn't remember being able to interact with NPCs, but they thought it was a neat addition, so they kept playing. Once they finished the level, the game just freezes on them, which ends up scaring the shit out of Kyle due to not expecting it. Tom laughed a bit while Kyle went to reset the console. It seemed to work just fine. And that's what they thought, until they got to the hub world. Knuckles and Mighty had a paranoid expression now, like something just set them on high alert. What the heck is going on? Kyle asked. No clue, Tom replied. They then saw that Knuckles and Mighty were running on their own now, without them even touching their controllers. At this point, they assumed that the game is broken. It was an old cartridge after all, so it made sense that it would be somewhat broken. Kyle seemed somewhat disappointed, but Tom cheered him up a bit after saying that he'd look into getting a new one. That's when they heard a voice come from the TV. It sounded threatening, and almost comforting in a way. It simply said, Found you. When they turned back to the screen, they saw that Sonic had appeared in front of Knuckles and Mighty, but he did not look the same at all. He was hunched over like he was ready to attack. His shoes had turned to a darkened cyan color. The ends of his quills were covered in black, as if they were in the shadows. There was an X carved into his chest. The worst part was his face. His eyes were a blood red color. He had black tears coming out of his eyes, and he had a malicious grin with yellow, rotted looking teeth. At this point, Kyle is freaking out, while Tom seems a bit stunned himself. Sonic starts walking slowly and methodically towards Knuckles and Mighty, but right before he reaches them, the screen goes black. Did that really just happen? Tom thought to himself. Kyle seemed really shaken from the whole ordeal. Tom tried to comfort him, but Kyle just simply asked if Tom could leave since he wanted to be left alone. Tom didn't argue, so he left and went back home. Weeks passed by, and it was becoming very clear that Kyle had changed. He told Tom that he kept playing the game, and that Sonic's actions would only get worse. He told him that he saw Sonic kill everyone in the game except for the chameleon, because instead, he was torturing him and made Kyle watch. Tom kept trying to tell Kyle to get rid of the game, but Kyle told him that the game was stuck inside his console and wasn't coming out at all. Then, one day, while Tom is in class, he gets a text from Kyle. When he reads it, he knew that the situation just took a turn for the worst. Tom, I'm sorry, but I can't do this anymore. 
I've been trying to get rid of this game, but it's becoming clear that not only is Sonic after the characters in the game, but he also wants to kill me. I can't let him have what he wants, but I also don't want to live with the things I saw. This will be the last time you ever hear from me again. You have been the greatest friend I've ever had in my life. Thank you, Tom, for everything. Goodbye. Tom ran out of his class and ran all the way to Kyle's house after reading the message. He burst into the building and sees what Kyle meant in his message. He had slit his wrist with a knife and bled out from the injury. Tom breaks down next to the body and starts crying intensely. His best friend that he has known ever since they were kids was gone. If he had gotten there fast enough, maybe he could have saved him. His crying was interrupted when he heard something from the TV. Sonic was on the screen, laughing manically, while standing next to the bodies of Knuckles, Mighty, Charmy, and Vector, but Espio was nowhere to be seen at all. Sonic still looked like how he was before when Kyle and Tom first saw him when he changed his colors, but now he had blood all over him, and the word segmentation fault was in the corner of the screen. What in God's name are you? Why are you doing this to us? We did nothing to you. Kyle did nothing to you. Tom screamed at the screen. Sonic stopped laughing. He looked at Tom and smiled. There is no God. There's only me.